Hi guys and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon tutorial video with me Bubblebox and today we're looking at the extremely important reconnaissance group of units. Now the reconnaissance units are essential as they give vision to all your units on the map. They have superior optics and special training that enables them to spot um, any hidden units that are around. Now the wrecker units, they can be infantry units such as these special ops down here and these sniper squads over here. They can be vehicles such as uh, there's a little jeep here, there's a nice little ferret over here and they can even be sort of tanks such as this guy over here and halos such as this gazelle um, recon chopper over here. Now all units actually see at the same kind of distance but they're better their optics the more chance they have to actually detect an enemy in their field of vision and once the enemy unit is detected the reconnaissance unit can identify its specific or precise type much faster. Now most of the reconnaissance vehicles are armed not all of them but most of them and most of them have or all of them rather have some sort of armor to protect them as well. However, always remember that the primary role of your reconnaissance unit is to spot for your other units and not actually to fight, although um, some of them do fight under exceptional circumstances. And some of them are, or a, very, a minority of them, should I say, are specialised for actual fighting, such as these Navy SEALs down here. But these others should really be kept back. Um, the tanks are really there to support. I don't really like using reconnaissance tanks much, but they're there to support tank pushes, not really to be at the front leading the tank push. And again with recon choppers, use them perhaps with other choppers that are armed with missiles that can so these can spot and the other choppers can go ahead of them slightly and shoot the weapons because the recon choppers do tend to be quite expensive and the armed ones, if you do want to take an armed um, reconnaissance chopper are very very expensive indeed there are a couple of specialized armed reconnaissance choppers and we'll have a look at those when we go through the decks these recon choppers are probably the most important and the most useful types of recon in the game although these small infantry units are really f really fantastic as well because they've got such good stealth and can remain hidden from the enemy even when the enemy is pretty much on top of them but these recon choppers they can fly over water they can fly over mountains they can hover above mountains and look down on the enemy they can hover above trees and get and basically they, they delete the um, line of line of sight problems you might have from any terrain that's in the way. So as we did for the other tutorials we're going to use the Americans and the Russians as an example of the Blue 4 and Red 4 decks respectively when looking at the recon units. Now we'll start off actually having a look at the choppers because I think most decks are going to have or going to want to have a recon chopper in their deck. Why? Well because they're highly mobile, they can cover great distances quickly can see over water, can see over obstacles, um, very weak hit points of course so they will get taken down quite easily. Some have weapons but um, need to be used carefully if they have weapons and, uh, and the, also if they do fire and are spotted they're going to be targeted by enemy aircraft as well. Although having said that there are a few exceptions and some of these um, recon choppers in Wargame Red Dragon are attack choppers in their own right and I'll point a couple of those out. We have a look at these Kiowas first. So these are pure, really, recon choppers. We've got the basic one for 50 points. It's got a minigun, so it can protect itself a little bit against helicopters, not against much else, to be honest. So you want to be keeping it at a distance. It's got very good optics, but it is a bit slow at 220 Ks. Um, then you've got the upgrade, the OH-50D Kiowa. This has got a rocket pod, so it can sort of attack infantry, but again, you don't really want to be attacking with your recon, your, with these sorts of recon anyway. You just want to be spotting with them. Slightly better speed, but not brilliant, but it has got exceptional optics, this one, which is what you're after, really. You're really after very good or exceptional optics in your recon and some nice autonomy on both of these. And then you've got this Kiowa here, the OH-58D Kiowa. This has actually got some really nice Hell 4, really nice Hellfire missiles with an accuracy of 70, a stabilizer of 50, and an AP power of 26. So most of these can hit and it can fire them on the move as well. Exceptional optics, a decent-ish speed, not too fast. 
no K autonomy, no armor of course, and a strength of only four. So you've got to keep this back behind your lines unless you're absolutely certain. It can spot and it can shoot at armored vehicles, but be really careful with it. And then we've got this uh, this really nice longbow, this AH. 64d longbow now this is an attack chopper in its own right i guess um 150 points so very expensive but it's got 16 of these hellfire missiles at a range of 2800 accuracy 70 stabilizer 50 and ap power of 26 again really really nice weapon you're going to want to keep this alive so you can get the full use out of these 16 hellfire missiles if you can use it carefully use it for specific jobs don't rush it in and get it shot down right at the start of the game it's also got this auto cannon with a nice range against helicopters so it can defend itself and it can shoot some ground units if it gets desperate as well it's got exceptional optics so it's going to see everything just just as just before that, that everything else sees it it's got an okay speed it is a prototype so you can only get it in the u.s deck and then they've got this ahij cobra um this is one I probably would avoid a little bit. It's got a couple of rocket pods for the range of 2,100, but serve a lot of other choppers got these. It's got a grenade launcher that you can defend itself against infantry. It's only got an optics of good, which isn't fantastic, and it costs 55. So I'd probably avoid that one. It's not the best recon in the world. Now, insofar as the Russian choppers are concerned, they've got these MI2s first. Now, these are quite cheap, but they have got very good optics. They only cost 40. You get a lot of them, so you can spread them around the board. Or if one gets shot down, you can get another one out without too much of a cost. And the speed on these are a little bit low. It lets it down a little bit, but the very good optics pick it up again. And it's very small, so it's hard to hit, although it's only got a strength of four. So if it is hit, it's going to get shot down. So that's the MI2. Then we've got the MI. Ah, oh, this is this is a pure spotting aircraft. Exceptional optics, really, really nice one. This 75 points, speed okay. Um, yeah, not much else to say about that really. Just a nice spotting aircraft again. Keep it back, keep it over trees to keep it in the air or keep it over rivers, and it will spot for you all day long. Don't put it too close to your front line. Strength of stick, so it can take a, a man pad missile in the face and still survive and get away to spot another day then we've got these two the mi 24k first of all um again this has got one of these rocket pods which you get on a lot of the choppers and a sort of machine gun thing here um you're paying for these when you don't really need it it's got exceptional optics i mean if we compare that to the previous chopper I mean, do you need these weapons? I'm not sure. You've got exceptional optics. It is, the thing that I suppose is good about this is it's got really fast speed at 330 and a strength of 10. So it can take a hit and it can get out of the way of missiles quite quickly if you spot it's being attacked. But it is quite a lot of money. And then we've got the KA-52. This is, a, again, an attack sort of, well, sort of an attack defense chopper in its own right. It looks pretty damned awesome. Uh, it's got a min an auto cannon, so it can defend itself against other helicopters and some ground units as well. But it's got these really nice weapons here. It's got these, and these are anti, are anti basically anti helicopter missiles. Four of them that can shoot at airplanes as well, but it's got to be quite quick when they're flying past because the range isn't fantastic. Actually, 55 stabilizer, 55, so really good, and can shoot these on the move um, with an HE power of four. It's got a strength of eight, so it can take a hit itself. Exceptional optics, and it's fast as well. And as well as that weapon and the uh, weapon, auto cannon weapon, it's also got this seed missiles, two of them. So these will attack basically radar um, anti-air at a range of 3,500 meters. So this is another weapon, very specific kind of use. But if you can use it, you can sort of stun the enemy like where the hell did that missile come from to down my radar AA. And again, a good accuracy and stabilizer and a massive AP power. So if it does hit something, it's going to destroy it, especially an AA unit. So a very, very nice unit. Quite expensive again. Got to look after it. It's got quite limited missiles, but very effective if they can get one off and hit. Oh, moving on to the infantry. Now, the infantry are basically lightly armed infantry squads. Best used to hide near the front lines in buildings, forests or on mountaintops or for sneaking behind enemy lines. They've got small size, making them difficult to spot. Don't get them into a fight, and if you can help it, 
because they're not that well armed. Um, they also come in a variety of transports depending on you, what you want them to do. So they've just got very basic weaponry, no close quarters machine guns or anything like that. They cost, they're not too bad, they cost 20. You do get a fair amount of them in your deck. Um, they're not too fast across the road, or across the ground, fairly average. Strength is only five, so basically use them for spotting, don't get them into battles, and you should be okay with these guys. And then we've also got the Special Forces Reconnaissance Units. Now these are fighting units in their own right. They have got good weapons, including decent anti-tank weapons and close quarters machine guns, as you can see over here. Also, these generally come in elite squads, so the training is as good as they can be, making them really nice against infantry, other infantry squads. They are quite expensive compared to some of the infantry, but they're definitely worth it. They can spot, they've got very good optics. Um, this particular one's also got a grenade launcher, increasing its efficiency against any infantry that it comes across, and the close quarters uh, machine gun, of course, makes it good in forests, uh, in buildings, and stuff like that. So very, very nice units, and don't forget, they're really fast across the ground at 30 kilometers per hour. So really nice units, again, come in a variety of transports. And the Russians infantry, again, they've got this basic recon squad, fairly lightly armored, very similar to the American one, very good optics, average kind of speed. These are shock troops, in fact, so they wouldn't be too bad because they've only got a strength of five again. Stealth very good, so quite good to spot. Bot. And they've got these Spetsnaz VMS, which I really like. And the thing that sets these apart is they are only two-man squads, so they can be taken out quite easily. But look, stealth is exceptional, so they are incredibly difficult to spot. And even a recon chopper that's almost on top of them will have difficulty spotting these units if these units are standing still. They're also trained up to elite, and they have these... Druganov SVDs, so these are sniper rifles basically, and they will one shot. You can see the accuracy is 95%, so they will kill anything, any other infantry they shoot at. They're going to take a, take a squad out straight away, and they will stun every other unit in that squad when they hit that as well. Um, yeah, so really nice, really fast as well. So very so very maneuverable, hide really well, and they've got this nice sniper rifle. Now, of course, if you do want to keep them silent and you don't want the enemy to know where they are you can sit almost next to an enemy sometimes with these things and the enemy can't see them especially if the enemy haven't got any units with good opt very good or exceptional optics close by then you can turn the weapons off and you're just never going to get these things spotted and they come in a variety of trucks and uh, helicopters again as do the basic recon infantry of the russians so let's move on. We'll have a look at the Jeeps, the armoured vehicles and the scout tanks. Now the Jeeps, first of all. Now the Americans have got a couple of Jeeps. They're quite cheap, the Jeeps. They've got, well, actually they've got four Jeeps, in fact. Well, keeps a couple of these. And the Jeeps, they're unarmed or lightly armed. Fast recon transports, basically. Try not to become engaged with the enemy with these guys. Used, use them to get a view whilst remaining hidden. Um, can be used in places like in your flanks, for example, and they are relatively cheap, but you don't want to be putting them right up on the front line because they're very weak. They've only got a strength of five, as you can see, um, so they're easily taken out. Got no armor at all. They are very fast, both on road and off road. I've got these guys, these two American ones, I've got an autonomy of actually a thousand Ks. That's really immense. So they're going to be able to get around the map all day long without getting refueled as long as they stay alive. Now, they've also got a couple of Humvees. Sorry, I'm eating a sweet at the same time as doing this. That's what the funny noise is. So I've got a couple of Humvees. One's got a minigun, one's got this rocket launcher. I suppose the rocket launcher could be useful against some infantry if infantry sneak up on it. But again, you're not looking at the weapons of these vehicles so much as their spotting ability. And the spotting ability of these is only good. So really, as I say, looking for very good or exceptional. Good, not really good enough for a recon vehicle. They are only 20. You're going to get a lot of them. So it's up to you, but I wouldn't take them just because they've only got good optics. So I've got very good speed and decent autonomy as well. So insofar as the vehicles are concerned, or the armoured vehicles, the Americans have got this M113A cav. Um, again, the optics are only good, as they are on a lot of these vehicles and tanks. If the optics are only good, 
you might as well just get a decent recon and get a decent tank in, you know. Um, all these weapons, you don't want to be getting these into a fight, really. They've got three machine guns, but you don't want to be getting these into a fight. Um, they are reasonably fast. The autonomy is quite poor, so you're probably going to need to refuel these at some point. They are amphibious. So, yeah, not too brilliant. Not too brilliant at all, these things. Then you've got the M1... Sorry, the M114A2. This has got a OK auto cannon, so it can defend itself if it gets spotted against ground units and against helicopters as well. Strength of 10, um, weakish kind of armor. The other one has got a little bit of armor. This has got some armor as well, but weak. Amphibious, OK on road, off road speed, but again, only good optics, which isn't really good enough for a recon squad. Then we've got this V150 down here. Um, similar kind of story, yes it's got weaponry, cost 30, it's got a bit of armour but it's only got good optics and the LAV 25 Scout, again good optics, very fast off road so you can get around, it is amphibious, it's got a, quite a good amphibious speed, so I suppose if you did want an armoured vehicle around the back of the enemy you could try and sneak this up the flanks I suppose across a river or something but again would you want to put it in your deck just for that? Probably not. Then we've got the tanks. And uh, American's got two of these recon tanks. We've got this, the M551A CAV. And to be honest, this looks pretty terrible. Again, the optics are only good. It's got a good off-road on road speed, decent autonomy. It's got a couple of weapons, but when would you use the weapons? It only costs 40. It costs next to nothing, I suppose, for a tank. But... Um, the weapon isn't brilliant, AP power of 11 and an accuracy of only 30. So just get yourself a decent tank and some decent recon to go with it. Now there is one reconnaissance tank that I do quite like, uh, a little bit anyway. It's this M551A1 TTS. Um, this has got um, these Shilega missiles which can fire anti-tank anti guided missiles with a decent range and a 40% accuracy and a 16 AP power so not too shabby with seven of them but what I really like is this tank has actually got very good optics good off-road on road speed and a decent autonomy as well so it can get around and can spot the enemy a little bit for you it's also got a main gun which can support infantry uh, or support um, pushes that are come up against infantry, should I say? Because I say it does have an HE power of four, although the main gun's armor piercing ability is quite limited, with an AP power of only eleven and actually of thirty. So it's got these Shilaga missiles. It's got very good um, optics, which uh, make it stand out a little bit from the other terrible tanks with just good optics. But again, the armor is poor. Is this a tank? Isn't it a tank? It's got poor armor. So I'll let you guys decide on that one. And finally, for the Americans, we've got these really nice Bradleys. The, mo the most basic one is the Bradley CFV. Got its tow missile with a nice accuracy and an okay-ish kind of AP power against some uh, most armored, all armored vehicles and uh, some medium tanks and light tanks as well. Strength of ten, very good optics, which is what we're looking for. Good off-road on road speed and pretty poor autonomy but just need to refuel it and it's got a bushmaster auto cannon as well which will do nicely against infantry and some helicopters then you've got the upgrade basically you get a better tow you get the eye tow instead of the tow the same bushmaster and everything else pretty much exactly the same and then you've got the upgrade to that one which is the m3 a2 bradley cfv upgrade to the tow again you've got the tow two this time Bushmaster, this tow 2 is immensely good, decent range, fantastic accuracy of 70% and an AP power of 25, take out any tank really. And it's got a decent speed and everything, uh, the same as the other previous Bradleys mentioned. So really nice weapons, do get quite expensive at the top end, these Bradleys, 90 points are quite expensive. You wouldn't want to lose them too cheaply, but uh, very nice weapons and very nice recon with very good optics. Um, not too shabby at all and the russians have got a nice selection of vehicles as well we'll start off having a look at their jeeps now they've got this really cheap 15 pointer which might look quite good for the price at first looks it's a jeep it's got a strength of five it's got no armor it gets around the board nice and e nice and easily with a good off-road on road speed and a nice autonomy 
but it's only got good optics. So that lets it down really. It's the only thing that lets it down, but it lets it down. So why get it? And then you've got the Waz. Now the Waz is twice as much. Hasn't got any weapons, but it has got very good optics, just like the basic American Jeep. Good off-road, on-road, and nice autonomy. And then you've got one, if you want one with a weapon, you've got this 45 pointer, the Waz 294 Plamia. Plam Plam so you've got an auto cannon if you come up against some infantry or if some infantry hunt you down, you can defend yourself against those with this um, a slightly auto cannon grenade launcher, I meant. Strength is only five again, exceptional optics this time though. So you're paying a 15 more points for your grenade launcher and mainly you're paying for this exceptional optics over and above the very good optics. So a nice uh, a recon jeep there for the flanks and uh, around the board for you. Now they've also got a couple more sort of um, armoured vehicles. Now the one I really like is this BRM IK. Now this is an old favourite. They also have this in Airland Battle. I think they had it in European Escalation or trouble thinking that far back. But um, again, look at the optics, exceptional. It's got a bit of armor as well, but it's the exceptional optics that we're looking at. And it's got a gun, it can defend it itself against infantry a bit as well. So quite a nice little armored car there. Perhaps a little bit on the expensive side, but I don't know. It depends on what you want to spend your money on, I suppose. Then you've got the Brom 2 and the Brom 3. So the Brom 2, cheap again, very cheap. And you've got the Brom 3 to go with it. So the Brom 2, very cheap. Only good optics though, let's sit down once again. It's got a little auto, oh sorry, it's a heavy machine gun here that can defend itself against choppers and uh, ground units. Everything else is pretty nice. It's even got a nice amphibious speed. It's just the optics lets it down. And the Brom 3 again, optics is only good. This this is a prototype actually you can get in the Russian deck. A little bit of better armor than the Brom 2, but you're not gonna wanna be getting this spotted anyway. Slightly better. It has got an auto cannon this time, an upgrade from the heavy machine gun. Uh, so again, can shoot at choppers and ground units a little bit better than the previous model. But again, it's only the optics that are, are the optics are only good. So lets these guys down in that respect. Then you've got sort of well, I suppose you could call them tanks. Do you call them tanks? These PT. Things. Um, we'll have a look at this. Look at this one first. The P P seventy one and its brother, the PT eighty five. They've got this Malayutka guided anti-tank missiles but these aren't really tanks they've got very weak armor they are cheap and and um, although they have got very good optics so they've got a gun uh, missile here four of them but the accuracy is not brilliant the AP power is not brilliant but what you are looking at are the very good optics so pretty decent on the optics front but you don't really want them to be have a fighting vehicle that isn't that efficient I mean the Bradley's for the Americans okay because they had really good really efficient weapons these Malayukas, they're not that brilliant to be honest so although they have got these we've got a main gun as well but again that isn't brilliant either so i'd probably bypass these in most of my decks unless i was going for sort of an, a 70s or an 80s deck or something and i might consider them and we've got the they've got another one the pt 76 b as well um Hold on, let's get this up. PT 76B, please. Thank you. Again, this has only got good optics, so and a poor gun, so just forget about that one. Then you've got the only tank, the, the proper tank, I would say, that actually looks like a tank, the T 55. This is the most basic model of the T 55. Hasn't even got a machine gun, just got the main gun, which is very poor. Um, only good optics. Autonomy is really good. Everything else is pretty terrible. Um, forget this one as a recon is just not too good at all so that's most of the recon units now there is a couple of our one one more that i want to show you this is my ultimate favorite recon it's in the french deck and if i can find it it's called the mistral where is it here it is this is the mistral i really like this the reason i like it is a recon unit with anti-air missiles uh, which makes it quite unique and quite brilliant. It's got a range against helicopters of 2625 and a stabilizer of 60% and an axis of 60%, so it fires pretty well on the move as well. So at the start of a game, you can chuck a few of these in with your infantry going to the front lines and they're going to shoot at any choppers they come across along the way. And then once they're there, you can use them as recon. They are medium stealth, so they can be spotted, but they're still pretty good. Small size as well, very fast off road, fast on road good autonomy a nice rounded unit 
with actual anti-air capabilities that is still a recon chopper also brilliant for ch for checking out your flanks and shooting down any choppers that are trying to flank you spotting and shooting them down as well nice unit for 55 points and finally a quick word on the ships now i'm going to deal with the ships when i do the ships tutorial but ships have their most ships have sort of their own types of optics most the bigger ships can be spotted much easier than the smaller ships of course um, and also remember that the anti-ship helicopters generally i think most of them have exceptional optics as well so they can be used as spotters as well so thanks for watching guys i hope you you, you enjoyed this or got something out of this uh, tutorial on reconnaissance vehicles Please do comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.